Hi, and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. And my name is Gina Curcio Holly, or better known as her daughter. We're so glad that you could join us tonight for this special premiere. Yes. Now, a YouTube premiere means it is a recorded video, but we are actually live right now with you in the chat. So we would love to interact with you. We've got an amazing fun fold card for yes. you tonight. It's a pop out swing card. Now it sounds complicated, but we got you. It's yes. not hard at all. The best part is we have a total of six. six samples for you tonight. Lots of inspiration to share with you. And the best part is at the very end of the video, you can find a project sheet. Mm -hmm. A project sheet includes full color photos, cutting dimensions, and supply lists for each of the six, six cards <laughs> that we have made today. We are super excited about sharing that with you. You're gonna be able to find the project sheet either here in the live chat, where yep. we're gonna be sharing it, or it's down below the title in the video description. If you click on that, you'll be navigated right over to download that yep. or print it from your computer. Super easy. Before we get started on the projects, I wanna make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Click that subscribe button and that little bell icon that's next to it and the word all so you'll get notifications. Yes, and don't forget if you're enjoying the content here, give us a thumbs up. That helps us out a lot here with YouTube. Are you ready to get started? Let's head to the craft table let's, get started. Let's do it. We're gonna start with the trimmer because we're gonna do a little bit of scoring. This one I did ahead of time because it's pretty basic, Gina, yeah. right? This is just your regular card base, five and a half by eight and a half. It's scored in half. So I'm just gonna put that off to the side. You are gonna need an extra piece of the same colored cardstock. Don't you agree? I found that that worked really, really best was to keep the colors the same. I actually did mine separately. <gasps> you did? Yes. So you did different colors on the inside and the outside. And it's got mint macaroon on the outside and oh, I'm using basic Oh, well, so much for that. Okay, so Lisa does it the same and Gina does it different, <laughs> which is why I love stamping together. Right, me too. They can learn two different ways. This is actually cut five and a quarter by six. Please make sure that you're going to do the scoring on the six inch side. Gina, you're at a better advantage than I am. Why don't you go ahead and do the scoring? The first one is going to be at the two inch mark. And this is one reason I love this trimmer, yes. right? Is that ledge at the top. And I love that the clear cutting guide is here because I can see exactly what I'm doing every single time. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to move over to the four inch mark. Correct. And that's it. That's it. That's nice all you have to do simple. today. All right, and let me talk a little bit about what we've done here. So it's kind of hard to see from your angle, but we did score at the two and the four, and now we're going to start to fold. So we're going to make what's called a peak and a valley. And if you're new to what peak and valley means, it means just one side is going to go up and one side is going to go down. So I'm using my bone folder here. This is my upside. Now I'm going to fold in the opposite direction. And now we have this peak and valley. So mountains and valleys are often what it's called in paper craft. Right. Same thing, right. same thing. So basically we're getting a little Z. Yes, we have a Z going on. All right. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the outside of the card. We both have a designer series paper selection cut to four by five and a quarter. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna go ahead and hear that now. Where is yours from? Whimsy and Wonder, what about yours? Mine is gingerbread and peppermint. I mm. love this. Now you guys all know if you've watched my videos before that I'm a huge fan of my silicone craft sheet. And I'm gonna turn mine upside down and I'm gonna add my adhesive around the outside. And this is gonna end up going on the front of that card base. Now, I don't know about you, did you add any adhesive down the center? I didn't, I just went all the way around. But see, I did long strips where yours are nice and short. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, I did next right down the center. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because oh, we're going to end up making a hole here, aren't we? Yes, we are. All right, so I'm going to line this up. I'm looking to leave a small border all the way around, just centering it the very best that I can. That nice, even press is always good. Yep. Next, what I did is I used a circle for my opening. What did you use for yours? I went ahead and used the Stitch So Sweet Lead Eyes. Okay, those are fantastic. I pulled out the circle that I want to use here. And I have my Stitch So Sweetly die ready to go. Now this circle is about two and five eighths of an inch wide. And I took those from the layering circles dies. Love the graduated sizes and you also get the scallops. And I'm gonna show you how to use these together too today. Yes, it's brilliant. So what we're gonna do now is gonna go ahead and run these through our cut and emboss machine. Let's go ahead and bring that in. Gina now has her die face down on the front of that card base where we put the designer paper. But oh, this tip I is love the this. best. I love this tape. This is the post-it note labeling and cover up tape. And I love it because it works perfectly for your dies. You're going to be able to secure them in place before you attempt to die cut in your machine. This has saved my life, like seriously. Yeah, especially with this where you need the window to be as straight as, straight as, as possible. possible. Right, exactly. Now, I also want to caution you too. 
depending on how high or how low you make your opening, because mine's in the middle, right. is going to actually impede a little bit on the bridges we're going to make. But we'll talk yes. about that. that. And it's not hard. It's just a little tweak we're going to teach you. So you're just going to run that through your die cutting machine. The great thing I love about this tape is as you disassemble it, you can actually save it and use it repeated Again and times. again, yes. Mm -hmm. So you'll see Gina is just pulling off the pieces here on that tape. And I like to pull the tape towards me because that keeps it intact. And I just put that right back on top of my little container and I keep that right nearby Perfect. my die cutting machine. Yep, me too. Now the reason I put my adhesive in X down the front was because I wanted to make sure that when I die cut this opening, it didn't lift. That, that makes these sense. two pieces didn't yep. separate. That's probably not going to happen with that pretty scalloped edge. I don't think so. But I did go ahead and I die cut the exact same size from white cardstock as well. And I think you did the same thing, right? I did too. And the, something to note too is if you skip the designer series paper part, mm -hmm. you actually can just keep the negative because you're going to use right. them again. That's right. Exactly. As long as you didn't put the adhesive all over exactly. there and you can separate them. Yeah. So this is great. This is going to actually become our swing focal point, right? Yep. Mine too. All right. Let's go ahead and work on that next. Okay. So I'm actually going to be using Polish Pink, which is one of the new in colors Ooh, that I love, love right now. Love that color. And I love this designer series paper you're going to use because it's not traditional right. in the colors. For Christmas. But oh, yep. it's so pretty. I'm also going to use Have a Holly Jolly Christmas from Holly Jolly Wishes. And I am obsessed with the stamp set right now. <laughs> I think awesome. it's super cute. And you'll see in a couple of my samples, I use some of these other greetings. Yeah. The great thing about that stamp set, Jean, and I agree with you, is it's timeless. So once yeah. you purchase it, you're going to be good, good to go. It's good for a long time. I'm going to be using old olive ink for my grading, and I'm actually using everything from the exact same suite. I'm using the Frosted Gingerbread Stamp Set. This has coordinating dies, and of course that matches that designer series paper I, I showed it. you. It's fun. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink up my greeting, and mine says, Sending You Peppermint Kisses, and I'm going to stamp that here near the top. Now, while I have that finished, I figure I have my ink pad out. Might as well stamp Might as well. the inside, yeah. right? And that's the great thing about the stamp set. I'm going to ink up the Wishing You a Very Merry Christmas, and I'm going to stamp that here on the inside panel. So this would be that valley fold. Right. Now, I did create a little frame for the front of my card. This is the cutest thing. I know. This is such a great way to use your dies. And yeah. I want to talk to you about how to do that. And at the risk of not bringing in the die cutting machine again, this is pretty simple. Once you've decided what color you want the ring, you're actually going to pull out a slightly larger scallop circle to the circle yep. that you die cut the opening in. You're going to that. see that it was this one. And you are literally going to nest them together and then use your tape. Yes. That's going to make your this life so life easy. Saver. And die cut it. And guess what? This is what you end up with when the pieces come out so to make brilliant. a frame. I love it. And this now is going to go around here. Now, typically, you might look at this and think, oh, not going to be hard. <laughs> I'm not putting adhesive on and, it. And you do need to use liquid glue because yeah. obviously adhesive is here. But, you know, I've been challenged with this and because the tip is a little bit larger than mm -hmm. sometimes I need. And, and it comes out a lot. I know. Yeah. So, you know what I did? <laughs> I bought these little precision tipped glue bottles and I squirted the multi-purpose glue down inside of there. I love these. This has been a lifesaver. Now, a viewer here on YouTube shared this little tip with me and said, put a rubber band on there to hold that cap open. So smart. But I do like to get it started here on my silicone craft sheet. So I know that it's flowing very, very well. Yeah. And what I'm able to do is very easily go around here and just put little tiny draughts. I mean, look how nice that's this That's enough? Can... That's it. This wow. glue is super duper strong. And I love that the liquid glue does two things. It's a little bit slower to dry, but it also gives you a little wiggle room. Wiggle room that you don't get with the adhesive. No, you just <laughs> do not. Ask me how I know that. I'm going to place this underneath here so that you can see a little bit better. And then what you can do is you can kind of shimmy a little left and a little bit right. And it's perfect fit. Yeah, you just like let that. it sit on top of there and dry. And then you've got your framed opening. That's adorable. All right, so switching back over to my card, I'm going to be doing a little bit of coloring. Ooh, my favorite. I love coloring, and I am going to be coloring with Stampin' Ups, Stampin' Blends, and these are alcohol-based. So let me go ahead and stamp my image. I am going to be using the Christmas tree from the Bee Jolly stamp set, and I love the stamp set for two reasons. One, it's obviously super cute, but two, I love whimsical stamp sets, and basically all that means is there's coloring involved, and coloring is really my therapy. Don't you love this set? I do. I love this set. You know what I like about it, too? If you're not huge on coloring, two things. The image is big enough where right. it's easy to color, and two, there's a lot of white in that Santa. <laughs> there it is. And you can use watercolor pencils, colored pencils, a even lot of dye options. Markers. Yeah, yep. lots of coloring medium choices. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm taking that Christmas tree, like I said, 
and I'm just inking it up off camera here in Memento ink. Now you're gonna always wanna use Memento ink when coloring with the Stampin' Blends because it emits that alcohol that's in those blends. So you get less of that bleeding per se than you would with other yeah. kinds of markers. Now I'm not gonna do a whole lot of coloring because that's boring to watch, let's be honest. <laughs> but I'm gonna show you a little tip on these Stampin' Blends if you're not familiar with them. I am using the lighter color. They do come in light and dark as seen here. And they have two different sides. You have this thicker side noted by the thicker line in the brush. And you have this thinner side noted by the thin line and the pen tip. Because this area is so big of the Christmas tree, which mm -hmm. is what I'm doing, I'm using this thick side. Mm -hmm. But I did use the pen tip for those ornaments. Yeah, that was smaller. perfect. Good for those little tiny areas. Exactly. I love those caps, how they lock on and pull off. So you yes. don't have to worry about that alcohol evaporating from them. I do too. And what are you doing now? Just coloring it in? I'm just going to color it in. I'm not going to do the whole thing, just this top part so you can kind of get the hang of what's happening. And the beautiful thing about these blends is it's like butter. Yes, with it. it is. And you know, if you repeat an area, you don't get those stroke lines like you do with a dye base marker. Exactly. Now what I'm going to do is switch over to the dark color. I'm going to kind of let that alcohol kind of evaporate here. Yep. I don't want it to bleed too, too much. Now, with the dark, there is no right or wrong way of coloring, by mm -hmm. the way. But this is just the way that I do it. Adding a little color there. Yep, I'm just adding a little color. Again, I'm going to let it sit for a second or two. And then all I'm going to do now is switch back to That's my light color. That's yep. it. That's all you have to do. Wow, watch this. And now I'm just going to pull that color like this. And pretty soon you're going to see that that dark is going to go right into that light. And what's awesome is you can also drag this darker color up. So it's going to give you some shading there. Yes. Now this is going to take a couple seconds for that to process to become more of its true color, right? Exactly. Once you're done, oh, it's going to finished one. look just like this once you cut it out and everything. Oh, look at the details underneath here. Mm -hmm. And obviously in person, it's a little bit more noticeable than it is here on camera, but I love what you did. Really, yes. really cute. And yes, there is fussy cutting involved, but these <laughs> images are so big that it's really easy. Yeah, yeah. So you can see that I did a few. I did oh, Santa. The Santa. And I got a wink of Stella on his love hat. Love that. Love that. And listen, this isn't red. No. No, it, this is polished pink, the same color I used for my greeting. That's fantastic. So yeah. the great thing about this is the color coordination with Stampin' Love Up it. products so that your Santa can be whatever color he wants to be, yes. right? Yes. Well, I'm going to do a little stamping myself for my little peppermint card here, and I'm going to bring in my real red ink pad for this. As part of that Frosted Gingerbread stamp set, there is a trio here of little peppermint yes, I candies. Love this. And I love this because it's nice and simple. Definitely one of those stamp sets that kids can even help you use. Photopolymer is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I love how simple the stamping is. It is. Now, the great thing about this that there is a coordinating die. So just like you did before, I went ahead and I taped that down so it wouldn't wiggle Absolutely. and I die cut that. But at the same time, I decided to maximize the space. Now inside the dies, there are various other size circles. I'm gonna put mm -hmm. this one on here too. And then I also die cut this piece from real red cardstock. Oh, cute. So we're gonna put these together to make a 3D peppermint Yeah, candy. show me how you did that. So here are those three peppermint candies. Aren't those <laughs> so really cute? cute? Now, I did put together the red and the white together, and I used that exact same little precision oh, tip because did. that made it super easy. Yeah. Dot, 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 little dot in the center, and I just put that together. So now I've got my little peppermint wow, candies. Oh, that's adorable. Thanks. So we can do some assembling now yes. on the front. So I've got my circle here, and I'm going to add a couple of these peppermints to there. And this is where my take your pick tool is going to be my best friend. <laughs> I like to take my peppermints and line them up first before I go crazy assembling them. Because if you're anything like me, do you ever put it down and you're like, oh, I want I to move know, it over. That's what I do too. I kind of visualize where I want to put things. So that's yeah. what I'm doing right now with my Santa. So I'm going to use dimensionals on mine. What are you going to use on yours? I'm using dimensionals too. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and bring our dimensionals in. And you're going to see me use that take your pick tool with that paper piercing tool attachment again. I'm going to add one of those dimensionals here to the back. I'm kind of leaving this all on here so that I have an idea where everything was supposed to go. That kind of just helps. And then I'm going to take this one and put this one down here. Now, this one right here, it's going to be a little too small for those. So I'm going to bring in those mini dimensionals. I need those too. Okay, good. And I'm going to add one of those here to the back. Love that you can just use that paper piercing tool attachment to remove those backings. Let's go ahead and just put that one. Oh, I'm going to put that one a little bit off to the side here. I want to make sure I don't cover up my words. You can see now that all I'm doing is kind of centering that Christmas tree. I put dimensionals on and just tacking that one down. 
Yes, yeah, so cute. Now, are you going to add that Santa as well? I am. And this is where I really do need both of these dimensionals because Santa's got a lot of big and small places, you know? <laughs> so I'm assuming you're going to use those larger dimensionals on the bigger areas and then the smaller ones on the narrower. Right. And you will notice that I am a dimensional fiend. I like putting them everywhere. Me too. Me too. Because I don't want my card showing up to someone's house disassembled. Right. I hate that. You know, the cards are going to go through a mail meter at the right. post office, and that machine has rollers in it. Mm -hmm. So if you don't balance out the dimensionals, it can come out a little kitty wonkus, I guess. Is that the word I I'm going to use? That's an old word if it is. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm old. What can I tell you? <laughs> and I'm putting those smaller mini dimensionals, um, like, on the top of his hat, in his gloves on the tip of his shoes and i'm just going to make sure that he's fully covered okay now you can see your santa kind of looks like he's jumping around there he's trying to get the star on top of the tree so his grounding foot is actually right over here i noticed that so i'm going to make sure that his grounding foot is sort of near the grounding of this christmas tree and place him so cute. And you added wink to sell it to the brim and the pom-poms. So I cute. did, yeah. I love shimmer. And I already put a mini dimensional on the tip of that star. And I'm going to kind of put it in his arm. Oh, that is adorable. I yeah. love that. Love it. Super cute. Thanks. So what's great about this is you can make this card as simple or as complex as you want. Exactly. Now, on the card in your project sheet, you're going to see that I added designer series paper only to one of these panels. Uh -huh. And then I got a glimpse of yours, and I was like, oh. You copied me! <laughs> yes, yeah. I, I did. So this one's going to be a slight variation so that you can see the difference. And I actually cut layers to mine as That's well. Cute. And you didn't, which is fine. Didn't. But remember, your panel is white while your card base is mint, right? Right, it is. So it's different. So I love that we can show them two different ways. So let's go ahead and let's add the designer series paper. You go ahead and start with yours, and I'll assemble mine. Yeah, and I just wanted to point out that this is also uh, the de designer series paper from the Whimsy and Wonder set. And I love it because this side Ooh. is shimmery. Ooh, you it. see that? Yes, And beautiful. the other side is very plain, great for all year round or even if shimmer isn't your thing. So let's go ahead and hear those. So I'm using Stampin' Seal Plus on mine. Me too. Yep, and I'm using my silicone craft sheet because you know I'm a big fan of that because I always have sticky all over my work surface and that helps eliminate all of that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add adhesive to my back panels here and you've added it to your designer paper, right? Right, I did. Now what I'm doing is I actually folded mine all the way down. I see you're not doing that. You did. I'm actually doing mine horizontally because I have better luck at trying to get it straight. And then I'm just going to look here to leave a little bit of a margin. But yeah, folding it. Oh, because you're covering up the whole panel. Yes. Oh, I love that. That's smart. So I love that we can show them different variations of how to do the same project. And then my second panel, again, I'm going to do it horizontally. And I'm going to lay that one here. That's cute. I love that you did the layering there. Oh, thanks. I thought that was a great way to bring in that old olive that yeah, I used. Yeah, for sure. And now all I'm doing is putting more DSP now again on the valley side. And what I did was I did pull it up all the way because I want to make sure that designer series paper goes all the way to the corner and it doesn't hang off. And that's how I nestled it. Nice. Very nice. All right. And just to know, I did opt out on inside greeting. Okay. That might be a no-no in the stamping world, but I don't always like a greeting there because I write lots. Yes. Does anybody else write a yeah. lot? I write a lot. So I make sure the outside greeting kind of covers the gist of it. Good. So you can put a personal message here. Now, right. when would you do that? The personal message, handwritten, I can actually do after it's assembled. Okay. But you can do it beforehand. I personally... Don't always make cards with the person in mind. Mm -hmm. I kind of make them and store them away and then choose the perfect card so for the right I. person. So do I. So you can write on this later, but if you have a person in mind, you can also write right now. Perfect. Let's go ahead and show them how the Z-fold gets connected for the swing. Let's do it. So what you're going to want to do is flip over your Peak and Valley, and you're going to put adhesive on the Valley side only, just on that block right there. So again, this is the Valley. Flipping it over, and we're putting adhesive only on that valley panel. All right, this is what I did. I closed it, ah. and I flipped it over. I guess you can do that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Again, two ways to show you how to do things. It doesn't mean either is right or wrong. It's just an alternative way of doing things. All right, how'd you do this? Well, I did this by turning it horizontally. Yes, yeah, same. And then I held my little pieces together. Okay, you're doing it differently. Okay, we're just fine. I looked here to leave a margin at the top and the sides. Yep, me too. 
And then when I looked to see if they were all about even, you know, we're not all perfect, but about even, I just tacked it down. Mm -hmm. I did give a cursory look to make sure those words weren't backwards. <laughs> and then I pressed. So I did. So you did yours open. I did. Again, no right or wrong way. But it needs, needs something, huh? Yeah, something's wrong here. <laughs> so if you've seen this project before, you've probably seen it just flop around there. Right, right. <laughs> we actually created what we call tabs or bridges or bridges mm -hmm. and all these are are four inches by one and a half wide but mine aren't oh i tweaked mine you did mine are half by three and three quarters come to find out when i didn't have your dimensions that this size worked well for me but that also worked well for you so again two options for them exactly and i do think that it depends on where you put that punched out on the yes, front. Yes. How thick those need to be or how thin they need to be. Right. But all we did was also score them at two. So then you can just fold them right in half. Score it at one it? and three quarters. Okay, well. <laughs> so we are opening up that bridge. So what I did on my short end is I took and I added my Stampin' Seal Plus. Okay, me too. Okay. Then what I did is I took it and I made sure that the crease, the bend part, was facing here to the outside. And I placed it right about here. And that's on your peak, correct? Yes, this is on the end. So if you open this up all the way, obviously this is the center crease. Yes, and I did the same thing. And I'm gonna do that at the top and I'm gonna do that at the bottom. Now you can use liquid glue if you're a little bit more um, conservative and you wanna make sure you have a little wiggle room. That's fine as well. I don't like to wait for glue to dry. I'm gonna, I don't either. I'm, I'm an very impatient crafter. Impatient. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are actually going to have to adhere these, right? Yes, so I'm putting adhesive on either side. Okay, so what I simply did is I took this panel and I folded it on top of itself so my bridges are here. Gina just held hers flat. Not cheating because I love my silicone craft sheet. And I'm going to add adhesive now to these bridges. And all you need to do is simply close the card. Do you see what I did here? I want to tell them because they may have the same problem. If you have your bridge on here and then you're going to see as you close it, it's going to be a hair too long, chop it off. I've never had that problem. <laughs> I you have it. So now we're just going to close this and then we're going to go over the bridges yep. and you're going to have this little... This little opening now. Now it's not going to fly around everywhere. Right. So this now is actually anchored to the card base. So exactly. it's not just flying. All right. Let's go back to our image. And this now goes where? It's going to go right on the outside. And this is what I do. I put adhesive just right in this That's window. That's exactly what I did okay. too. Okay, good. So we're gonna go back with the stamp and seal plus, and I'm gonna put it right where it's visible inside of here. And I'm putting a lot. Now, if you're gonna use liquid glue, I'm going to caution you. You don't want to go too far to the edge because right. it's gonna ooze a little yep. bit. And then make sure you're holding your card straight, and then just make sure you get it right through that window, and you're gonna tack it down. Press, and then press, I'm press. just gonna give it a little squish here just to make sure it's all stuck. But you remember that last peppermint candy? I just, ah, it's cute. Yeah, well, I couldn't waste that. So I'm just gonna add one more dimensional here and let me show you where I put it. I was concerned that when I closed my card, it might be in the way, but you know what? It was Oh, that's adorable. Isn't that cute? Love it. Look at that. Now we promised them lots more samples. Yes, we did. Let's show them. I made so also a little Halloween. I cute. love this designer series. It's so great. Okay. The paper is fantastic. It's called Cute Halloween. It's in the mini catalog. So obviously you're going to make a couple Halloween cards. You're going to want to get on that now. Yeah. But look at this is how it opens. I'm going to oh give you a little my, aerial view look at there. Look how cute. And then just cut out another one. So these designer series paper prints are fantastic to just fussy cut and add. Yep. Great I for the too. I love it too. Great for the grandkids. So just a really simple Halloween one. What do you have? All right. I have a fall card here. Ooh, so cute. I actually used a host exclusive stamp set here. It's called Seasons of Fun. And there's Ugh. all these little cute kids. This one particularly spoke to my heart because it's got a little kitty there. That's I don't know so if you can see cute, them. that fall theme. And all I did was in that set, you'll see these are individual leaves. I stamped those, cut them out, put some mini dimensionals on them, and they're actually cute. popping out there cute. a little bit. I love that 3D, but, but look at that. That designer series paper on the inside is perfect because it doesn't take away from that colorful image. Yes, I love it. And again, love to color. So cute. Now my last one is for fall. I love so this. I did one for Christmas, but I want to do one for fall. I love this stamp Me set. Me too. Sweets yep. and treats. It is really versatile because you've got cupcakes, you've got pies, and of course, caramel apples. apples. Gotta love that. Use my Stampin' Blends to get those really pretty colors in there. But look, I used the cloche dies for my opening shape. That is shape. adorable. And ah, look. 
I there we go. That. So, and it just says, you're sweet. Happy fall, y'all. Just add a couple leaves to add a little bit more fall flair to that one. Just just different things that you can do with this. Keep in mind, any shape is going to work yes. for this. Yes, this is the best part about this yes, card. Yes, it is. What else do you have? I have, this is the last one in the project sheet. This is oh my just the cutest gosh. thing, I think. <laughs> Love it. I kind of did what you did. Yeah. Right? With... It's I used the Penguin Playmates Designer Series paper from the Celebration brochure. Yes, that's and a limited. This is only yeah. going to be available to the end of the month. Yes. And it's free. It is free. Every $50 you spend, you get to pick out something for free from that brochure. Yep. Best thing ever. And, and so you cut them. Look how cute. I cut them out, layered them with some dimensionals. Oh, that's and adorable. It's just the cutest card ever. That's adorable. And I love the variations of this because you can see that I've done my greetings on this side where Gina's left her center panel. So lots and yeah. lots of ideas. But so, I lied. What? I got one more. You do? I do. I oh, do. Oh, she's trying to show me up. So I <laughs> love this stamp set. It's, it's called Sweet Little Stockings Bundle. And it comes with a dog, a cat, and a so hamster. So cute. And they all have these varying stockings. It's adorable. Comes oh. with a beautiful designer series paper. Cute. Perfect dies. Like, this is the perfect stamp set. And the one reason I love this stamp set is because the dog inside is an Australian Shepherd. <laughs> and I have two. Uh -huh. And I just to your this, heart, huh? Yeah, this is just like, this is super, the first thing I'm getting. Super duper yep. cute. I like how this one is completely empty here. You got a lot of space to leave a personal message. Yep. Really, really cute. Well, we would love to know your favorites. Gosh, we've got so much to share with you today. Yes. Remember, these six are in your project sheet. Yes, and this one's just exclusive for the live, so yeah. this won't be in the project Might sheet. be part of this tonight's premiere. And remember, multiple pictures, cutting dimensions, and all the supplies for all six of these cards. Yes, wasn't that fun? Let us know your favorites in the comments below. That was a lot of fun. I know, I love stamping with you. You know what's really interesting is how you can learn different things from different people. And that's what I love about this is we have that give and take. Absolutely, yeah. stamping with friends and learning from each other is what it's all about. Exactly. And don't forget to download that project sheet. It's in the video description below. And mark your calendars. I'm yes. coming back live right here on YouTube on Monday, which is September 27th. Yeah. I hope that you will join me. You're going to come back with me again, aren't you? I am. In November. <laughs> Whoa, I can't wait to have you here. We look forward to that. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you soon. Bye.